I'd love to hear a little yeah. bit more about in an interracial marriage, how you've learned <laughs> about just differences in ethnicity and your racial yeah. differences and how has that impacted you uh, personally? I mean, that would probably be more on my side because Jeff grew up, um, well, do you want to talk really quick about like uh, your... Yeah, I grew up in a very diverse area, um, you know, um, very middle class, um, it, it probably like half really diverse, half white area, a place called Columbia, Maryland. Um, and it was great. I enjoyed my time there. And then when I went to col college, um, I mean, I was just a sea of white folk <laughs> in Indiana. Um, I, always, I always tell people like when I went to Indiana, Anderson University, I discovered, oh, white people and corn. Um, <laughs> this is where they are, you know? And so, um, so I just, I just, you know, and, and even the last 20 years of my life have been in white church where the first, um, uh, first half of my life has been black church, even though it was very diverse black church. And so I just, I've already like had this, um, um, this view uh, of understanding different cultures. Uh, you know, I mean, praise the Lord, I picked her, but I, people would say, you know, Jeff, you're an equal opportunity dater. So I dated Indian, I dated um, uh, Armenian, um, Asian, uh, white and black. I just dated, you know, um, anyone who looked really pretty, you know? <laughs> and so, um, but, all that, all of you. <laughs> but all that to say, so coming into the marriage, um, my, um, my lens of diversity and understanding different races and you know ethnos was um, already um, already widening, already wide. Whereas when she married me, it was we little. Um, but you talk about that. Um, yeah, it was a huge learning curve for me. I, I always say like when I met Jeff, obviously I was aware that he was African American. I could see him, um, but it wasn't a huge. Interestingly, like I wasn't. It was not a huge thing on my radar as far as like, do I like or not like this? Is this or is this not an issue? It was like he loves Jesus. I love his character. I love his humor. Like I love that we can talk about deep stuff and then laugh our heads off for two hours. Like I, and there he's were incredibly other good looking. Of course. I was waiting. Come on, I was yeah. waiting. <laughs> Usually she leads. I waited, I waited with that. as long as I'm I could, so man. Sorry. <laughs> Usually you lead with that. I did. <laughs> right. I mean, I did the first time I saw you. I was like, oh boy. I mean, but but now. <laughs> But not far as looks. But, no, no. I, yeah. I've always. My oh boy, I'm in trouble. Handsome. You're right. Super <laughs> handsome. But anyways, Thank we get married, you. and I realize like, whoa, like this is a huge thing, and yeah. I am now responsible to like learn and be a part of this. And I mean, it, it's not without its bumps and bruises. Mm -hmm. Like, we'd been married two years, and we were at his parents' house, and I said a comment that in my white brain made total sense, and it was highly offensive to his family. Mm -hmm. And it, it went very poorly. I mean, I ended My up downstairs crying. Yeah. Jeff is upstairs. I can hear him like yelling, defending me. And I mean, it was just, it was a very difficult conversation. It was a scene. Yeah. It was yeah. a scene. Um, and later on, one of Jeff's sisters was very great. I came upstairs. We kind of resolved it. Well, really, your dad just My put dad. it to rest because your yeah, dad yes, is. He settled the matter. Woo! Yeah. And he was like, we all racist. We all love Nikki. It's over. I was like, oh, right. my gosh. <laughs> um, but anyways, his sister came down and just talked with me for a while. Like, this is why that's so offensive. Like, in you know, in our culture, like, this is what we're told is beauty. And the way that you framed that made that sound like you believe that's beautiful, which makes us feel not beautiful and not mm. seen. And again, it was totally ignorance on my part. I come home and I'm talking to one of my best girlfriends is black and we were chatting about it. And I was like, I just, it was a comment out of ignorance, but it certainly was not intended to cause pain. And I basically got roasted for it. And she was like, at what point as a Caucasian, when your ignorance is hurting people of color, do you own that ignorance and change it so that we don't have to keep saying, I'm sorry. Right. And I just remember sitting there like, whoa, like that's, good. that's, that's totally good accurate. Like, and being married to a black man and now we have children, you know, biracial children who will, you know, 75% of biracial children that are black and white self identify as black when they're an adult. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I have to like, I gotta fix this. I have yeah. to educate myself. I have to be more aware of like what this world looks like. What does the lens of a person of color look like in America? Because I have learned over the last 12 years, it is, it yeah. is night and day from my white lens. Yeah. Yeah. And not in a bad or a good. I mean, it, it just is. Just like their experience yeah. is different than ours. So it's been, Jeff has always been very gracious. He's never um, angry or militant with me. He is a safe place for me, which is necessary. I was listening to a podcast just about everything going on in our country. And the man said, like, both people that come to the table for conversation have to feel safe. It's an inherent human need. I can't come to a conversation about anything, much less something as charged as race, and not feel safe and have the conversation. So I'm so grateful that I have people of color that are safe places. My other girlfriends are really safe place. But it has been a process. I mean, I have read books. Mm -hmm. um, it became a much more interesting dynamic when we had children and people would say comments to Jeff and we would come home and Jeff, 
they were clearly like racially charged comments and I would all of a sudden be up in arms because now it's okay like my husband can defend himself but now you're talking about my sons mm -hmm. and now I have now we have personal skin in the game on a different level and right. now I'm really frustrated mm -hmm. so learning I will say learning from Jeff has been beautiful because Jeff is a black man in America. He knows that experience, he has that lens, but he also has the lens of Christ. And he also very much self, he's like, you know, of course I self-identify as a black man in America, that's who I am. But what I really identify, like the, the not really, the primary thing that I identify as is a son of God, yeah, is right. a follower of Jesus Christ. And so what does that look like? And that has to be kind of the, the overarching theme through which I see every other part of myself that I identify with. But that doesn't do away with the fact that he's a black man in America. You know, it's a beautiful melding. But he's never been, learning from Jeff, who has never been ever like angry, militant, um, um, vengeful in any way, has been like a beautiful part of my learning process. And even my family's. Like it's mm -hmm. been, I grew up in like Northern Arizona, y'all, like white country, Hick. Like, I mean, that's just who I grew up as. And so we've had a lot, my whole family has had to do, and gratefully, um, they've done it pretty humbly, like just been educated. Mm -hmm. So it's been a process. It has not always been easy, but it has been a beautiful process. I like to tell people, we believe in building bridges and bringing people together mm -hmm. and unifying. Mm -hmm. And I feel like our marriage is a picture of that. Yes, we well, chose knowing yes, going is. in, like this, this actually might not be easy. Like there's gonna be hurdles we have to overcome. But I see so much beauty in that. When our fathers, you guys, who are 72, black and white, both pastors, they were like singing around our family's piano last year, Christmas. Hmm. I'm gonna get a little teary-eyed. Yeah. It was such a beautiful moment of like, man, 50 years ago, that would not have happened. Yeah, right. My yeah. father-in-law, I mean, self-admittedly, like had so much animosity towards white men. And Right, rightfully so, if you hear his story. But to see those men stand mm. there and like sing to Jesus together, be like, awesome. wow, and then no, like we are a picture awesome. of that. And then our babies no, are like the awesome. ultimate picture of that. Like, yeah. it was a really beautiful moment of like, this is a type of reconciliation that the yeah. kingdom commands of us. And be. like, so it's a lot of work, but I'm so excited to be a part of it, I guess, is like the finale of that story.